Good afternoon. Hi. Uh, just have to figure out what goes on. How does this work? Right. Wonderful. Um, good afternoon. Thank you very much for coming. Um, let me talk to you about Fox Marble, um, which is unique in that it is the only publicly listed um, all marble company um, we believe to be listed anywhere in the world. Uh, I think there's one in Greece, but I'm not sure we count that. Um, we, uh, uh, I suppose we should read this first. Well, I'm sure you already have. Um, we uh, control a vast quantity of very high quality, uh, premium, and in some cases very scarce marble across our mining uh, licenses that are held in Kosovo and latterly in Macedonia as well. We have a Jork compliant uh, CPR that uh, was prepared for us when we listed two years ago um, on the AIM market, confirming that we have in excess of 300 million cubic meters um, of this marble. In a sense, um, it's quite right that we're not a mining company. Uh, if for anything, we're a quarrying company and really we're a buildings materials supplier. And um, we take advantage of the fact that the stone itself is, is on topographically very benign territory and um, easy to access um, and is a very well understood and well known resource. We're not explorers and we're not looking for anything. Um, as a consequence of that, what we've done is, is that we've opened four quarries already, three in Kosovo and uh, one in Macedonia. Um, the business of quarrying is very low tech. Uh, it's not particularly sophisticated, although the institutional base that we enjoy comes from all of our Italian-based expertise, um, and that gives us uh, an advantage in what is a very low-cost area uh, in which to operate. Uh, we have bought a 10-hectare um, site just outside uh, Pristina um, on which we're building a processing plant which will cut and polish the blocks of marble that we extract in quantity from our quarries. And the bottom picture there, you can see our block farm um, in one of our quarries, um, and that is the first of our two core products. These blocks, which typically weigh between 15 and 20 tonnes, are themselves um, a product that uh, we sell to our key markets. Um, the uh, value that was placed on the resource that we control, and we control these on licenses that range between 20 and 40 years, um, by uh, Gold Associates who conducted the CPR, uh, was 16 billion euros, and that was really uh, only valuing the stuff that was measured to the uh, indicated standard rather than the, the inferred, which is um, basically a third of our total um, resource. Um, the marble market itself um, is very stable, it's very consistent, it's not commoditized, there's no uh, volatility in, in the pricing. Um, it generally ticks up my bigger problem, uh, in line with inflation um, over the years. In the last 15 years, marble has um, uh, uh, trebled in price. Um, uh, as a consequence, um, because we are already in commercial production in our quarries, or at least some of them, we expect to generate revenue relatively quickly as opposed to the life cycle of, of, of more sophisticated uh, mining companies that um, have to do much more complicated stuff. Um, and as a consequence, um, we expect to get to a cash flow positive position um, relatively fast. Um, this is a um, slide from um, the CPR demonstrating that, um, as I say, a, a third of our resources, um, stop here, uh, they basically valued at uh, 16 billion euros on a very conservative basis. To a certain extent, it's a number that doesn't have much meaning. The quantity of marble that we have means that were we to extract at our peak rate of production um, for the uh, life of the resource that we have, um, it would take us something like 3,000 years to get to the end of it. So it's effectively an infinite resource, but of course there's any any mining expert knows until it's out of the ground, it's probably not worth much. Uh, we have a very prestigious board that we're privileged to have. Our non-exec chairman is Andrew Ulner, who's also the chairman of Marshalls PLC, the last big independent buildings material company in the UK. Um, he's joined by Roy Harrison, who's the ex-group CEO of Tarmac, and um, by Sir Colin Terry, who um, is an ex-air um, marshal in the Royal Air Force, and uh, currently the chairman of Megitz, uh, the FTSE 100 engineering company. And our fourth non-exec is Paul Jordan, who is the co-founder of Amati, um, uh, the VCT fund up in Edinburgh, who are significant investors in the, uh, in the business uh, and have been since, um, since flotation. 
Um, uh, I'm the CEO. My partner, Dr. Etra Albani, is a native Kosovan Albanian. It's probably fair to say this is all his fault. Um, he's uh, co-founded the company with me. And um, our FD is a, a, a woman that I recruited from Deloitte's in, in my last company. So we're a very solid, um, close-knit management team. And as I said earlier, all of our institutional information comes from our office in Carrara, where our Croy strategist, uh, Pan Orlando Pandolfi, is based. Um, our um, engineering uh, factory designer, um, Mara Datsi, um, and our COO um, in, 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 in Kosovo, general manager, um, Etra, uh, I beg your pardon, um, Naim Rustemi. Um, these are where our quarries are. Uh, Kosovo is tiny. It's 11,000 square kilometers. Nowhere is very far from anywhere else. Um, this is the most developed of our quarry sites here. Sirigana is in commercial production. Uh, payer is not at all. And significantly, I, I think, for the company and our um, stakeholders, our um, activities here in Macedonia are, are we think, of um, great interest because of the marble that uh, exists in that valley and where we have created a near monopoly in White Sivic, um, which is the only place it comes from. We recently raised £4.75 million in a placing in July to uh, basically take advantage of the fact that we have the opportunity to acquire another Sivic quarry in the Prilip Basin in Macedonia, which we have now done. So our job now is to get on the ground, uh, equip it, and, and, and open um, that particular quarry. Sivic is, is the marble where the supply-demand equation is totally skewed in our favor. There is only one other quarry that produces it. Uh, it's been producing it for 60 years, across, literally across the road from us in the Prilip Basin uh, down there in Macedonia. Oh, it's gone. And um, it is um, uh, very expensive. Um, its reputation was really made about 12 years ago when it was used to build the great, the, the great um, mosque, uh, the, the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque in Abu Dhabi. And a million and a half square feet of white civic was used to make that building. If you Google it, it's the 10th wonder of the world. It's the most magnificent structure. And since then, the demand for this marble has been uh, enormous. And of course, the supply has been very restricted. So we are now the only other place that you can get white civic anywhere in the world from our two quarry sites um, in Macedonia. Um, in addition to that, we um, are uh, creating a monopoly in a marble called Illyric White in Malasheva. I will go back to this map. Um, up here, where is it? Can't see it. Oh, yes, Malasheva, um, where we have one site which is open, um, where we've just produced the first blocks um, of marble, and we have acquired the rights to a 300 hectare site half a kilometre north of that, in which there is a vast quantity of, of Illyric white. We believe, um, I have to be careful about what I say, but we believe that it will be our biggest volume seller um, by the end of next year, beginning of 2013. Um, and that Malasheva quarry, uh, we didn't have to pay for. We got it from the state, but we have to equip it, and, and some of the funds that we raised <coughs> recently um, will be used to do that. Um, the other thing that we are focusing on very uh, completely uh, this year is our marketing sales and distribution arrangements around the world and um, we're making very good progress in that we have a distribution arrangement in North America through which we have already sold um, slabs of marble uh, which is our second core product which is currently being processed from our blocks in Carrara and then shipped out and as our factory comes online of course we'll bring the processing back to Kosovo take advantage of the increased margin, the lower labor costs, and, and a greater efficiency in, in, in production. Um, we uh, have established an office in Italy, which is also selling marble um, at the moment. Uh, we have a um, significant offtake agreement with a company called Pisani here in London. They're based out in Feltham, and they carry our stock. You can go and see it there. And we are working very hard to conclude arrangements in China and the Middle East, which are, of course, enormous markets um, for us um, around the world. And this is a schematic of, of basically where we're going to uh, apply additional resource to those areas where we've already made inroads with, um, with our product. Um, this is basically the money shot. Uh, basically, a cubic meter of marble, which is nearly three tons, um, is worth, in our estimation, this much across our various ranges of marble. So it ranges from 400 or 200 on the gray to uh, in excess of 1,350 euros 
for white civic. Uh, I apologize for the fact it doesn't say white civic there. Um, and that's block marble, which is the 20-ton block that we sell by the ton to that constituency that, that, that buys this. If you take a cubic meter of marble and you process it and you sell it by the area, by the square meter, once it's cut and polished uh, into two or three centimeter uh, uh, slabs, and this is based on a two centimeter calculation from a cubic meter of marble, then the revenue based on the per, per square meter pricing of each of this stone comes in at between uh, 1,380 and over 10,000 euros per cubic, meter, uh, per cubic meter once it's processed. The costs of extraction, once we are fully ramped and at full, full tilt in our quarries, um, vary between 40 and 60 euros per ton. And the cost of production, once our factory is up and running and at full tilt and uh, working to a reasonable capacity, will be somewhere in the region of 12 to 15 euros per square meter depending on the marble. So as you can see, we expect to gain the benefit of a very, very high margin business. The marble industry is totally fragmented. It's all privately held. There is no dominant player in the industry capable of interfering with the supply demand equation or interfering with a, a, a new entrant. Our production capacity, both at the block and at the slab level, isn't going to move the needle on the marble market, which is worth in excess of 125 million tons as of 2012, and the marble market itself, um, whilst for sure being a component of the construction recovery play, has since 2009 ticked up every year since then, and uh, I'll come back to that uh, in a short while. These are our marbles. Um, pictures never really do justice to this stuff. We've actually got examples of this on our stand downstairs. Um, that's the white civic, which is the most expensive, and I would say the least expensive was probably the this, uh, this, this, this cream marble. Um, this is a demonstration of the development of our quarries themselves, um, the blocks that we're extracting um, in large quantity and um, very large sizes. These are slabs that have been cut and polished in Carrara um, that have been or are available for sale. And these are our um, slabs um, presented here in Pisani, which are our distributors here in the UK. Um, this is the statistic that uh, I would refer back to. These are the production levels um, over the last four years. And as you can see, it's just a, uh, a, a, an uptick across the, um, um, across the period. Um, th th there's a lot of data in my presentation, which I don't have time to go through. Uh, and I suspect um, probably isn't um, the right time to do this, but we have, um, we have hard copies of this on our stand and downstairs for anybody who wants it. Uh, and we have a lot of data relating to the demand for marble and the, um, um, uh, the capacity that there is, a, uh, uh, there is around the world and who the marble um, distributors and uh, producers are by country. Um, this is a little out of date now. Um, our market cap is now 35 million pounds. Um, our share price as of yesterday was 24. This is post the placing that we did uh, at 18p at the beginning of um, July. And um, uh, these are some of our institutional shareholders that have been alongside us since, uh, since, float uh, since flotation. Um, the one institutional shareholder um, that has increased his stake to a disclosable level is Artemis. John Dodd is a big supporter of ours and contributed to the placing recently. And we brought one new institution on board, um, which was um, the Mighton Group, who um, purchased a million pounds of the shares in the recent placing, taking them over the 3% mark. Um, as a consequence of which, we're, we're very, very well supported by a bunch of institutional shareholders who've been with us for two years. And uh, obviously, um, we expect great things to come from um, um, our, our, our project here. Um, Kosovo itself is very stable. It's heavily supervised and monitored by the European Union. It's been um, very well supported by the Americans and the Brits. Um, you have an edge if you're either there in that territory. Um, they've just held their third fair and uh, free peaceful election on June the 8th. They still haven't got around to forming a coalition government yet, but uh, I'm sure they will. And we have had very little interference in, in what is you know, the rough and tumble of an emerging market. People talk to me about country risk a lot. 
But as I say, um, we have had a very smooth ride up till now. Um, and thank you very much. Um, I'll be downstairs if anybody needs to talk to me. Thanks a lot. <laughs>